All right, it looks like we are recording. So, perfect. Everyone, thank you so much for being with me today. Today's topic is going to be uh, special. We're going to be covering uh, royalty-free images that you can use like, from your music, the images, the audio, the sound effects, and even video clips that you can use for your marketing as a real estate agent because a lot of real estate agents just have a hard time creating their own content. Uh, so what you can do is at a cheaper rate, leverage other people's content that is already created for you. In fact, this screen that we're looking at, this Word document that I have, has a picture. And I didn't design this or have somebody design this. I just searched for a royalty-free image that I could use that went with the theme of what we are covering today. So I'm actually going to give you guys this Word document. Let me show you this Word document. This Word document has all of the links to the resources that I use personally. So for my audio resources, I use these links here. For my image resources, I use these links. And for my video, I use these two right here. So let me share with you. I'll start with, uh, I'll do the images first. So Stock Unlimited. Uh, hold on. There we go. Okay, so Stock Unlimited, I mentioned it at uh, one of my prior webinars that I did for you guys. What I like about Stock Unlimited is um, they have a plan where you pay and um, the pricing fluctuates. It's ranged from $80 to like $150 from what I've seen, but you pay a flat fee and then you can download as many images as you want. They have audio they have fonts and they have other things that you can download, but their strength and the reason why I use them isn't those options, is actually just for the images itself. So Stock Unlimited, it's not like you have to pay 5 or $10 per photo. You just pay uh, one flat fee and then you can download as many images as you want. And I would say 90% of the images that you see me use is from Stock Unlimited because I don't want to pay per, per image. So I use Stock Unlimited all the time. Um, Shutterstock is where I go for my specialty needs. So when I have like a real high end need, let me head over to Stock Unlimited. You can see these are the images that I've purchased in the past. So I, I bought a, a Starbucks cup because I was giving people a gift card. Um, I needed uh, cards, like blank cards made up. So I had those, a book for an ebook that I had that people could download. Um, Here's a, a really cool one for planning a schedule. So I had uh, an appointment planning call to action where people could book a call with me. So I, I used that and it was already pre-done. So all I had to do is go to Shutterstock. And in that case, I searched something like um, uh, appointment schedule or something like that. And then it came up. Um, they, they have real estate related ones too. So you could just type in real estate, home, door for sale sign, that sort of thing. And they have everything already done and you can just pick and choose the ones that you like. So Shutterstock is definitely on the higher end. Um, that's like my premium place of where I go to, where I want to like pay per image that I use. Um, until I found Stock Unlimited that I use that in like 90% of the time. One of the other ones that I use for royalty free images is uh, Pixels. So Pixels is a good one. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can just come here and type in anything you want. I'll type in real estate. Hit search. And they got a whole bunch of pictures. Like you could turn this into, into an Instagram post, make it a square image, have a call to action or phrase or something on the left, maybe an inspirational quote. Like we, I don't know how many of you have seen this. This is probably one of the most popular images for stock photography for real estate agents. I'm totally guessing, but I think it is the most downloaded image. I, I see it used by so many people. And if you're wondering where they get it from, well, they get it from Pixels. So they just come to Pixels and type in whatever the keyword is that uh, you want to use. And obviously, you want the if you're going to use real estate in your area, you want the architecture to be from your area and the landscape. So, like, I wouldn't be able to use this, for example, but I could use this. So, pick um, the trees that are from your area and the real estate as well. So, anyways, Pixels, really cool um, that it's totally free. 
Um, and when I search the word real estate, there's 279 options that you could use. Now, one of the other ones that I like to use is Pixabay. That is one of the other top free uh, websites where you just, you don't pay at all. You just go to Pixabay, search the images you want, download them, and you can use them. Now, to be ultra clear, you're going to want to check the usage through each of these websites. I do my own due diligence of like when and where can I use these images? Um, because maybe if you want to download it and you're going to use it as a book cover for a book that you're publishing, maybe that has different rights than something you're posting on Instagram. So just make sure that you have the rights, um, the proper rights for it. But these are the sources where I find these types of images. So Pixabay, again, it's images, photos, uh, and videos, but their strength is definitely the photos. So if I come here and I type in real estate, hit search and they have 1,168 images. And again, there is that most popular photo <laughs> that every real estate agent uses. So you can just scroll down and pick and choose the ones that work with you. I don't always search the word real estate. Sometimes I'll, I'll type the emotion that I'm looking for. So I'll say excited. And uh, like these are good ones where the people are looking at their phone and they're excited and, and right above their shoulder, you could write the word, like this guy right here doing the fist pump, looking at his computer. And then you could say the name of your city. So for example, Miami house values have gone up. You could put that little call to action or a phrase right there. And people are going to be scrolling through and looking at this guy all excited. One thing I want to point out is a lot of the free websites like Pixabay, they'll feature other companies at the top. So this first row is like a paid advertisement and they make money by you buying those photos. So what you want to do is scroll on down and here's a bunch of the photos that you can download. What did I search? Oh, excited. Right. So here's another girl. She's excited. You could write right in the over her shoulder here about the house values have changed in their area and do a Facebook or Instagram ad. Obviously not all these images are going to work. So you want to pick and choose the ones that do work with you. And then uh, Unsplash, this one is also free. So you'll notice in my chart when I emailed to you, um, I want to label all the free ones. And then I want to put a dollar sign behind beside the ones that cost money. And I want to put three dollar signs beside the ones that are really expensive. So let's head, head on over to Unsplash. So I'm going to search real estate, 547 images that you could start using for some of your, well, that'd be a good one if you're in the city, for example, talk about um, um, house values going up, the high cost of living, whatever, because it's like high rises. And you can even search real estate related things like this gave me an idea. So it's a girl holding keys. So what if I typed in instead of keys, what if I typed in moving? So here's a bunch of people moving boxes like that's a fun one. That'd be a fun Instagram post, right? If you lived in a, in a city, I would uh, get somebody to Photoshop the street signs so that they're actually in your area. Uh, this is actually the TTC, so this is from Toronto, looks like. Yeah, so all different pictures of people moving. Some of them are just moving in motion, like this guy's on a bike, so clearly that's the movement that they're talking about. So those are the free resources for the images. And then I also have uh, resources for my audio, so I'll start backwards here. I'll go to Facebook has a new sound collection. So if you are doing video, and you're doing just a talking head of you talking about real estate, that can be pretty boring. So sometimes you want background music. So if we head on over to Facebook, click the link, it's facebook.com slash sound slash collection, and then it will log you into the Creator Studio. So Facebook has a thing called the Creator Studio now. And uh, when you log in, there's two tabs. One is for tracks and one is for sound effects. So let me just but whatever, I don't know what this one is. I want to hit play. So 
So what you'll notice I did is at the beginning, obviously the guy was chanting, so I skipped forward a little bit, and the beat actually picked up really cool. That was a really cool moment right there. So when you download these songs, you don't have to use them in their entirety. You can just download it and use a clip from that song. So for me, for example, at the end of one of my videos, I would probably download it and use it from this point here. And that could mean or lead to a really fun outro of my video or intro or whatever. So what I'd like to do is I just come here. There's over 2,600, not over it. There's 2,648 tracks currently right now on the Facebook sound collection. So what you want to do is go down here and just like download all the ones that you like. There's different um, styles of music. So I like to go with ambient because it doesn't have voices usually. So let's just click on this one. All right, so that's too ambient for me. So far I'm four for four where I don't like any of these four, but if I was to sit here and take like 20 minutes of time, and this is what I do, I hit play and I skip, 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 no, hit play on the next one, skip, 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 and eventually I'll find one, I'm like, oh, that's got a good beat to it and it's soft and it's uplifting and it's not competing with my voice if I was talking in the video. And so what I do is I just find the songs that I like and I download them. Now, Facebook really created this collection for you to use on your Facebook videos. So you probably could get away with using it on Facebook and YouTube, that sort of thing, um, because most of you aren't going to get like hundreds of thousands of views. Now, if you are going to use this for commercial use and um, you're going to use it on both, both platforms, I actually don't use the Facebook Creator Studio or the YouTube one. There is a YouTube one. Let me show you that. And the reason for it is because YouTube and Facebook basically hate each other. So they are probably not going to be cool with you using their sounds and music on another platform. But if you do want to use their sounds and music, uh, YouTube has their own section. It's youtube.com slash audio library slash music. And here's a whole bunch of new music that you, like this one's rap and calm. That's interesting. Let's hit play. I would not define that as rap, but anyways, if you did and you liked it, you just hit the download button and you can download all the songs that you like. And they even have sound effects. So both YouTube and Facebook have a sound effects section. I want to show you the use of sound effects in a second. Um, but anyways, you can literally search anything. So say I need a, a um, bike bell. For whatever reason, there is none. All right, so let's just search the word bike. And here's a, a whole bunch of bike sound effects. And I want to play a video for you in just a second. I want to show you how I add sound effects to um, what the people are visually watching on the screen. And subconsciously, they don't even notice. But it makes the video so much better. Um, and it's actually fun to add and find sound effects to your videos. So both Facebook and YouTube, let me go back to Facebook. They have the sound effect tab. So you would click on here. And then I could click bike. So here's a whole bunch of the bike kickstand, a bike bell, a couple options for you. Now, if you want really good music that you can use on both platforms, um, check out the freemusicarchive.org. This is what I used to use. It's totally free, and I love it. it has really, really good um, ambient soundtracks that don't compete with your voice. So this is what it looks like when you go to their homepage. It looks like a kind of a ghetto looking blog. But uh, anyways, if you go and then you click on charts and then click on all time, they filter all of the artists that are giving you their music away for free. You just have to give them credit in this 
in the video that you upload. So if you upload it to Facebook, in the description or in the video, you would give credit to the artist. And let's listen to this one. This is the most popular one that they have. So that's cool. It's kind of like, if you lower the volume, I can talk over this. And it's going to pick up the beat in just a second. Okay? So if you lowered the volume and then added your voiceover to the video, this could be a really cool song. I've actually used that song in many of my videos in the past. I don't have the volume of the song as high. I, I drop it down to like 10%. So it's like just covering the background noise. Because sometimes when you guys make a video and it's of you talking, there's other noise in the background of like the ambient noise of the air conditioner and like, like background static. So I always like to add some sort of soundtrack in the background and I'll put it at like a 5% or 10% volume level so that it just kind of like deals with all that background noise and it adds a little bit of flavor to my videos. But let's say you like that one, you would literally just click this download button and you don't have to sign up, create an account, um, pay, uh, nothing. It's totally just artists are trying to get their music out there and they want you to use their music. You just have to give them credit. So if you go there, Click each of these, play the ones that you like. And um, yeah, I've probably downloaded like 30 songs off this website that I've used in the background. They have a filter as well. So if you go to um, this category and then um, what I do, probably electronic. So I'm going to click on electronic and then ambient electronics. So there's a sub filter for each category. So say I picked hip hop, not that I would, but say I did pick hip hop, I could put ambient or something where it's not like as aggressive because you can pick based on like the tempo, the speed, um, the, the energy level. Is it a low energy? Is it a high energy? Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it angry? Is it fearful? So all songs and soundtracks have a certain mood to it and you can filter based on that. So, what I would do is I would go down and hit play on all of these, download the ones I like, and I would create a folder so that I have all that for the future. So this is where I used to get all my royalty-free music. However, I found this one, and I pay for it. There is a cost. It's only $1 sign, so it's not super expensive. Let's say it's $15 to $30 a month. $30 would be kind of expensive. I'm not sure if that's what I pay. I pay for so much stuff. It's called Epidemic Music Sound. Or, sorry, Epidemic Sound is the, um, the website. And uh, so when you come here, what I like to do is I go to Latest. And then it filters all of the latest ones. Obviously, you see the category says Angry, so I'm not going to use that. But let's hear what it sounds like. And what I really like about Epidemic is it creates this sound wave so I can get a sense of the music before I have to, and I can skip to the part. So I'm going like, well, that's a long intro, so let's skip here and then hit play. Yeah, okay, so that is angry, <laughs> so I probably wouldn't use that, but you could if you wanted to make a point. Um, so let's hear this laid back one. So what I like to do is I just click right before I see the spikes in the valley so that I can hear the transition from one to the other. And what I also like about Epidemic is that they give you the song, but then they give you the song as an in instrumental. So say I didn't like that girl's voice or the lyrics she was saying, but I did like the song track, then I can just listen to that. So instrumental. <laughs> So 
So I actually do like that. So I w if I did download this whole song, I would probably choose from here and I'll hit play. So that transition right there would be really good. So say you did an Instagram story, for example, and it's a 15 second video clip. Well, the first three seconds would be that like low beat and then the rest of it would be the up, up, upbeat part where it, it transitioned. So that's cool. So I use um, Epidemic for all my music going forward is basically where I come here. Um, you can search. It has a really, really good filter for searching. So if I click on Browse, you can search the style of music that you want. So I'll do, um, what does it matter? I'll just do electronic and dance. And I'll be like, well, I want it to be, what mood do I want? I want happy. And see how it's adding this filter? It's changing. So now we're at 709 songs but if i'm like i also want it peaceful now we got a thousand and three songs and then lay back cool okay so let's take a look i'll hit play Let me show you the difference. See this song. When I look at the song, I can tell it's pretty much the same repetitive thing the entire thing time. So say that's a two or three minute song. People are going to get bored of that. So what I like to look for is let me show you my favorites. If I go to project, my favorites. I use this song. So let me show you this song. So it's already d diverse based on the first three, but if I keep going, it gets even different. So what I like about this is within the two or three minute length of this song, I can change and use different clips of the video that I'm creating. So say you're doing a, a video tour of your property that you have for sale coming up. Um, you could do a time elapse of you walking around the outside. You could do a, a quick tour of you going through each of the rooms with a, uh, a steady cam, that sort of thing. And then you, based on the theme or tempo of the music, you could use the clips. Actually, since I have this song right here, let me show you how I use that song in a video. Hey there, it's Danny Wood. Super excited. Today we're going to do a mini adventure. We're going to go through New Orleans on a guided bike tour. But first of all, I'm going to need the right attire. Perfect. Okay, so now that we're all ready to go, let's go on this three hour tour. I'm hoping we get to explore some of the local culture. We're going to see some of the graffiti art. We're going to try some of the food. We're going to go to the graveyards. We're going to explore some of the old architecture. It's going to be a blast. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> So what you'll notice is to the beat when like the snapping is happening happening and the, the, the sound is changing, I'm cutting the video to the beat. And what you'll also notice is, let me back up, so we're at the 46 second mark. Listen, when I hit play, you're going to hear the noise of a cap, like a lens cap. Did you hear that? The lens cap? Let me do it again. So you actually don't hear that. That that didn't exist. What I did was I searched the sound effect on Facebook or YouTube, got the sound effect of a lens cap coming off, and then I added that to my video, and it just adds a realism. Another example is when I'm going forward here, you'll hear footsteps. <laughs> Oh no, actually there I added the uh, police siren because <laughs> I was in New Orleans and it fit. And then let me go forward to the bike. So right here you'll see, listen when I'm on the bike and you hear um, a bicycle bell. So it was quiet. You, I don't know if you heard it, but there was a bike bell that I added to it. So it's cool how you can add these subtle little sound effects over top of your videos and it just adds so much depth 
um, to it. So let's keep going. <laughs> There, when I went into the wall and then out of the wall, I used a warp sound because I wanted people to feel like they were warping into a different scene. <laughs> At that moment, let me back up, you'll see the graffiti in the background. It's we go from one scene to the other, and I use a DJ scratching to transition from the, this graveyard to the graffiti art. Right there, you heard the, the DJ scratching. So I just search things like that and then add it. So we'll leave that there. So see how adding sound effects to it just adds a little bit of depth to like what you're up to. So say I was um, a video of me opening a door, welcoming people home. Well, I would get the sound of a door opening or unlocking um, and it just add that to your video and it adds so much more. So let me close that because it's taking up bandwidth. Um, is that? Here's another example of a video I did. And that music that I got was from Epidemic. And I, I just wanted like the sound of the propeller like winding up quick sort of thing. So Epidemic is amazing for you to get your music and also your sound effects. Because they have a sound effects section. Um, let me do a search here. So I want to hit search. And then I want to do um, bike bell. And then here it comes up with a call like no results, no results, but then under sound effects, it shows me I got a couple. So what I do is I point over here and click on see all, and then it gives me all the different bikes. I'd be like, oh, I like that one, and then I download it. So adding sound effects to your videos like makes so much difference um, in, in the world when the people are watching your videos. So Epidemic, um, I pay a monthly fee. It's either $15 a month or $30 a month, something like that. But that's because I plan on and intend on making a lot of video. And um, I just posted my 499th video. So I have a lot of videos out there right now. Um, but they were all just me recording my computer screen, which I'm doing right now. Going forward, you're going to see me doing a lot more of like video editing, storytelling, and um, if I'm going to tell a story, I need more images, I need audio, I need sound effects. So this is where I get the sources. Now, if you are going to do video, first of all, let me show you the free one cover. So C-O-V-E-R-R dot co. And you come here and whatever, I'll just type real estate. Hit search, and it's going to come up with whatever videos have to do with real estate. So, hmm, I guess they only had three. Not a good example. So what else? Home. Oh, nice. See, this could be a good one. The uh, espresso. Let me hit play. So what you use websites like this for is to get be real footage. Um, be real is just like images that kind of set the scene and the place of where the people are and transitioning from one to the next. And sometimes you don't have clips of everything. So you can just search that and be like, oh, that'll be a good one. Because that could be a good um, intro where you have the title over the top and then it's just the subtle background of the coffee dripping or whatever. Tons of videos. So cover... I mean, they're limited, it's free, it's a good source for you to get your free videos, and um, they have, let me go to Urban, it's probably a better option for you. Oh yeah, they got way more under Urban. Oh wow, they even got one for Toronto. 
Um, cool. So you'd want to find one that relates to your city. So obviously, if you're not in New York, you would not use this one. But um, maybe some that are like close up of the city itself, like a brick wall. Oh, that'd be a good one. Brick wall. Cool. Yeah. So here's a couple of ones like that'd be a good Instagram story or something. You could use this. It's really colorful. The pink if you're a girl or a guy, I guess. And um, you could put whatever title you want on there. Let me hit play. What's the video of? I guess it's just the candle. So just the candle movement. Let me now show you the real one that I use. So I'm showing you this because it's free. I mean, you kind of get what you pay for. There's a bunch here, but you'd have to kind of sift through and find the ones that work for you. There is one that is better, but it costs three dollar signs which means it's pretty expensive i think i paid hundred dollars for the year um, because it was 50 percent off so it's called story blocks and basically what it gives you is the option to um, download little bits and clips for example so here if i typed in um wall Let's see what they got for wall. I'm going to hit search. And there's a drop down. So they have video, audio, and images. Their strength is definitely the video. So they have three different packages that you can pay for. Do not do the audio or image one. Um, you'd be way better off for images. Do uh, stock unlimited, for example. And then for audio, you're going to be way better off with um, uh, epidemic music. Right, so they each have their own strength and then kind of cater to the other options on the market. Story blocks, definitely a video option. So let me click on video. I wanna do, let's say what's real estate. So we have a lot of options here. Look at all these different video clips of real estate. You can just download the one that you want. Say, let's see this mortgage one. And it's a guy approving the mortgages. Eh, I wouldn't use that one. I would actually use something like um, maybe this here with the glasses and the iPad. Oh, yeah, that's sick. Okay, so use a clip like that and then put the title of uh, contact me anytime. And then it has like the clip of the person like contacting you in the background, right? Or say you had a testimonial, you could have the testimonial on the screen and then in the background, it's got these people like getting their keys. So many different things you can do. And there's filters. So I'd be like, ooh, housing. clip of like houses rolling by. So maybe on an Instagram story, you want to talk about um, uh, house values changing in that area, whatever. That was a, a lame example, but you know what I mean? You can create so many things. So let me show you how I put all of this together. I'm going to show you, now I made this for me, not for you. <laughs> so, this is like a behind the scenes sneak peek. I am creating a video in a couple of weeks where I'm going to be uh, hopefully inspiring people to be active and um, live a healthier lifestyle. So that's what my video idea is going to be on. Now I want to tell a story. So what I did was I went to a Word document and it was a blank document and then I just started writing it out. So with the text, what I want you to look at is the text, not the scribble. So I say, ever put off exercise? We all have the same 24 hours in a day, so why do some thrive when they get older, yet others let it slide? Even I have ups and downs. People don't believe skinny people can have a fat roll. Let me tell you, we can, and it's unflattering. Trust me. Resolutions fail, and we always have next Monday, right? But the excuses just keep piling up. So I wrote a script and it's a couple pages long. What I would do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to record me reading that script out loud. Now that I have that script writ, um, read out loud, I have a voiceover 
So now that I have this voiceover, I'm like, okay, now I need images that go along with what I'm saying. So that's the handwritten part. So I say here, ever put off exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, it going from black and white, and I'm going to take the cap off the lens. I'm going to pan down to a 24-hour timing because I'm talking about we have the same 24 hours in a day. And then I say, why do some people thrive? So I'm going to have uh, my feet running, like the shadow of my feet running. And then I say, yet others let it slide. And I'm going to show a clip of me in bed hitting the snooze button. So what I do is I write out my story and then I start putting like, okay, what, what would go with, so why do some thrive? Well, maybe it shows somebody actually running and being active. Okay. And what tells the story of somebody letting it slide? Well, somebody hitting the snooze button. So what I'm doing is I'm putting together a little story, a visual story. I want to tell this story visually. Now, some of the clips I won't be able to make. So let's say um, I don't like my clip that I made of me hitting the snooze button because the lighting wasn't right and I didn't know how to film it correctly. Well, if that's the case and I don't have the right clip that I made myself, well, then I can just go to story block and let's just hit... Um, Um, alarm, or I guess it'd be better if I hit this type snooze button. But anyways, I'm going to hit the alarm. And then here it's going to show me a whole bunch of clips of clocks and the alarm going off. Or people, oh, here's a good one, sleeping, sleepy girl waking up. Obviously, I would want a guy because I'm a guy telling the story. So I would want a close-up of the clock and uh, hitting the rewind button. Oh, time is running out. That's a good one right there. So you could easily just download that video clip and then have that showing on the screen while I'm reading the words, yet others let it slide. That, what, that clip actually works really good with the time running out. <clears throat> so then in the yellow, why I have this one yellow is because at that moment, I want to be looking at the camera because I intend on me being in the film looking at the camera, telling the people this part of the story. So at that moment, I'm going to look in the camera and I'm going to say, even I have ups, ups and downs. People don't believe skinny people can have a fat roll. Let me tell you, we can, and it's unflattering. Trust me. So the yellow part is me reading, looking at the camera. And then from here on out, I'm going to be looking down. So when I say, let me tell you, we can, it's unflattering. Trust me. I'm going to go back to reading my piece of paper, reading my script. Now, I'm not going to put the footage of me looking down reading the script what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay I'm going to have a clip here it says looking in the mirror through the door so I'm going to open up the door a crack and have the camera looking in at me while I'm looking at the mirror and like maybe I'm disappointed with my my fat roll or whatever um, so that's just that part of the story then I want to go on about resolutions fail we all have next Monday right but the ex excuses just keep piling up okay so when I say resolutions fail, I'm going to have um, a clip of me writing out my resolutions on my iPad. Then I say we all have next Monday, right? And I'm going to do another clip of me um, talking to Siri saying, Siri, add gym reminder for Monday. And that's just me like putting off the gym another day. And then I say, but the excuses keep piling up. So the next clip is going to be a, a long to-do list of all this nonsense because we keep letting things pile up in front of us. So I'm really excited to show you this, this complete once I have it done. But this is a behind the scenes. You'll see how I wrote out the script. I'm going to read the script, one take. And if I make mistakes during the take, so say I'm recording and I'll, I'll read from here. So I say, so I want to share with you how, how I gamify exercise and turned it into a daily habit. But let's say I say the word daily hobbit <laughs> by mistake. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, beep. And then I start over and I record. I keep recording so the recording doesn't stop. I'm going to just make this loud beep and then say that sentence over again. And when I'm editing this video, I know, oh, yeah, I got to cut that part out. This part, I made a mistake. And I can see the spike with the voice because when you're editing video, it has a, a voice at the bottom that shows you the ups and downs. And uh, anyways, whenever you do a beep, it has a big spike. So whenever I see a big spike, I know I, oh, I probably made a mistake and I have to edit that part out. So there was a couple questions. Let me get to those.
Love the sound effects. How long are the videos typically? Uh, the videos, I'm assuming you're talking about on Storyblock. Sorry. If you're talking about how long are the videos that you should make, um, if you're doing a, a story, like Facebook story or Instagram story, it should be 15 seconds or less. If you're doing a, a post, like an Instagram post, it should be like 30 seconds or 60 seconds, um, no more than that. If you're doing a, a landing page video or a video for like um, getting people to register for things, then probably a minute to two minutes is, is good. If you're doing a Facebook Live, video, the longer the video, the better. So in that case, you probably want your Facebook lives to be like five minutes to 10 minutes longer, if it makes sense, but five to 10 on a Facebook live. And then how long are the clips um, from story blocks? Um, they tell you, so 21 seconds, 30 seconds, 12 seconds, 20 seconds, 24. I learned this when I started filming my own B reel. Um, so like, let me go back here to my story of my B-Reel. So I'm gonna be um, here. I started by taking small steps consistently and the clip is gonna be of a clip of me tying up my shoe. What I wanna do is I wanna hit record, start tying up my shoe and then stop the recording and I want all of my B-Reel clips to be about five to 10 seconds. That way I can edit out the good part and I'll only use the two to three seconds that works, if that makes sense. So when you're shooting your own B-Reel, try and count one, two, three, four, five. Like at a minimum five, because anything less, people get too excited. They're like, click, record, stop. You need it longer, that way you can use the, the real parts. So um, you'll notice on story blocks, they actually go even further and most of their B-reel footage is 30 seconds. 20 to 30 seconds on average is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, some are lower, seven seconds, 10 seconds. Typically, that is that range. Yep, uh, love the sound effects. Yeah, the sound effects add so much. Um, I'm actually going to do a session showing you guys how I make a video from beginning to end, including the audio and including me adding the sound effects. The challenge with me doing that part is um, I, I only have an iPad. So I'm only going to be able to show you from an iPad. So those of you that don't have an iPad, I'm going to put a warning to skip that session that it's irrelevant and not practical for you to watch. But for those of you that have an iPad, you're going to get a whole long tutorial from beginning to end with just a folder of raw footage and my story. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it together for you in real time. What's your source of video taking phone or camera? So for my own videos, I use my iPhone. I also use DJI Pocket. The reason why I like the DJI Pocket, let me show you a picture of it. So this is what the DJI Pocket looks like. It's literally the size of a candy bar, like it fits right in your pocket. Um, it actually attaches to your phone. So is there anybody? Yeah, this person has it attached to their phone. Let me open it up. So it has a little plug. And like with my iPhone, it has a lightning adapter. So they have a, a lightning adapter plug, I guess. And um, you plug the camera into your phone. And now I have it on a big screen. Whereas a lot of people are buying gimbals, which let me show you what a gimbal looks like. If you are going to buy a gimbal, the Smooth gimbal is probably the best one for most real estate agents. So let me show you an image of it. So this is the smooth gimbal. Um, you put your phone on it and it keeps your, your shots really steady. So if you're walking through the property, the problem I find with it is it's so big and clunky. Like, look at, look at how, look, you know how big your phone is. Okay. Now look at how big the rest of this contraption is. And you're going to walk around in public. You feel like a, an idiot for the most part. Um, it's not convenient for you to be carrying around. So if you're at Disney world, and Disneyland with the family and you got this thing, like you got to set it up, you got to balance it, you got to turn it on. It's like you missed the shot. But with the DJI Pocket, it literally fits right in my pocket. I don't need my phone if I don't want to. And um, it keeps all the shots super steady. So this is my main camera. Now, I also use the um, GoPro 7 specifically. So all GoPros are pretty much crap, except for the 7. So let me show you the image. 
GoPro 7. And you'll want the one that's black if you are going to do it. So it looks like this. It'll have GoPro 7 black written on it. Um, it has a gimbal built into it. So you don't need to actually attach that to a gimbal to get steady shots. Uh, what it does is it records at a larger frame and then crops it and then digitally straightens out the photo and removes the bumps in real time as you're doing the recording. So between these two cameras, um, I use the GoPro basically for like the B-reel stuff of like, um, say I'm on my bike and I want a clip of my bike pedaling. I can put the GoPro like down at my feet. It has a wide angle view. It's waterproof, it's rugged, it's really cool. If I was to pick between the two cameras, if you're like, well, now you're telling me to buy two cameras, what's the difference? Um, my suggestion is the DJI Pocket. Um, the GoPro, only if you're really like riding bikes, jumping off cliffs, snorkeling, scuba diving, then the GoPro 7 is the best bet. The, Go the DJI Pocket is just way more universal. You can use it for your real estate business. You can use it for your travel. You can use it for your family. You can use it for like so many things. Um, I, I think the pocket is revolutionary uh, for the fact that it's so small. I don't need this big contraption. And um, all the photos that I take and video just get uploaded right onto my phone. So there you go. Uh, uh, is an iPhone better than an Android phone for taking video on average? You know what? There's so many people. Um, that's a question. I just read it out loud. There's so many people in both camps. I would say with today's technology, you can't go wrong with any of the modern phones. So that would be my answer is any of the new modern phones. Now, um, I get a lot of people commenting on the photos that I take. Um, and I use an iPhone. Uh, so my, I have the iPhone X because it has portrait mode and a couple other things. And um, so I personally use the iPhone, but I don't want people to get angry. and be like, oh, Android, the, the, new, the new Samsungs, like the new Pixel, they're all amazing. Yeah. So that's that. Cool. So yeah. And um, in fact, the video that I make telling this story right here. Okay. So what am I going to do? I want to record me reading this script and I'm going to record that using my GoPro. Um, the reason why I'm going to record the GoPro is because I have a good microphone that attaches to the GoPro. So I'm going to get better audio. So I'm going to use that. Then for the B-reel footage for um, close of me, gra oh no, not that. <laughs> okay, pinching fat, zooming in. So I'm going to get... Uh, I do have a little fat roll. So I stopped, I run five days, six days a week and I bike six days a week. However, for the last like three months, I took it all off and then I replaced that with eating junk. And so magically over the Christmas holidays, I got a, a, a tiny little fat roll. So it came back and I want to get rid of it. I know that, but I want to take advantage of the opportunity since I have this little fat roll, I'm going to make a video clip of it and then I want to tell the story. So I'm going to use the, um, my phone for that because it's going to be stationary and the phone is good at close up. So your phone is better at close up shots than like the GoPro and the DJI pocket. Then let's see if there's any of me close up, close up, pan down. All right, shoes tying. So on the, on the shot of me tying my shoes, I'm going to use the DJI Pocket for that one because you can tell the pocket. It's really cool. I don't know if they have an image of it. Let me go DJI Pocket um, tracking. Yeah, they don't have an example. Yeah, okay, here. This one. So here's a guy on a skateboard, whatever. And you can tell the pocket what you want to uh, track and you draw a box around it. So when I am getting a close up shot of me tying my shoe, I'm going to draw a box around my shoe. And I'm, after I'm done tying my shoe, I'm going to walk away. And then the camera is going to follow my shoe as I walk away. 
maybe, maybe that shot doesn't work. So I'll take a couple different ones. But the pocket, that's another reason why I suggest the pocket over the GoPro is because you guys can actually, as a real estate agent, you can set that down on a counter, tell it to track you, and you can walk around the kitchen showing the pantry and showing the stove and showing the view and stuff. And the camera is going to follow you around. So I could be three to five feet away from the camera. And as I'm walking around pointing different things out, it's going to um, track me and actually like move around and it doesn't go in a complete 360. It's more like, um, I think it's like a 200 degree angle or something like that. It doesn't go all the way in a circle, but I can go left to right and do a whole room pointing things out and it will follow me around. Another question says, but the digital camera is still a better option except that the dis disadvantage is size, right? Yeah. Okay. A DSLR camera. So if you guys don't know what a DSLR, it's any of the common DSLR. These, like the Sony, the Canon, the Nikon, all of the DSLR cameras, um, the modern ones do video, and they give you so much better control. And that's a disadvantage because 90% of the real estate agents who pick one of these up, they don't know how to use the control. Then they have all these video clips and then they don't know what to do with it. It's like they can't even get it off the camera and onto their computer to edit it because it's saved as like some fancy file format that they don't know how to use. What I like about the DGI Pocket is that it just saves it. I can default it and say save it as like an Apple file so that I can open it on my iPad or save it as an MP3 so I can open it up on my computer and upload it directly to Facebook or whatever. So these cameras are better, 100%. However, I'm choosing not to use these cameras because I want to live by example and lead by example and show people that you don't need these cameras. You can just use your phone and make pretty cool video. Another question. Is it possible and allowed to save the replay to an external drive? Um, what are you talking about? Are you talking about my replay? I save all my replays for you um, in the membership section. And then you, yeah, you are talking about that. Yeah. Um, so they're already in an archive where you can just go back in, t in time and watch them whenever you want. If you're wanting to watch it offline when you don't have internet access, um, I wouldn't know if you downloaded them anyway, so go for it. I wouldn't be able to stop you. So, yep, go ahead. I don't have an offline source for you because you would still need internet to be able to download it. Cool. Yeah, that was my overview showing you all of the different tools that I use to make the videos that I make. Um, oh, I have a couple other folders. So here's a folder I have of stock images so like here I, let me open it oh i didn't want it open in that dang it hold on open with photos here we go so here's an image it says ask me about real estate and it's got a picture of a for sale sign right now I didn't design that for sale sign. What I would have done is I would have went to, okay, I need a for sale sign. So I'm going to go to stock unlimited and I'm going to type in um, for sale sign. And let's see what pops up. Now it's going to come up with all of these photos. So what I like to do is I'm like, no, I, I want to like a drawing. So I'm going to choose the filter and I pick vector. So now watch what happens when I do vector and then search for for sale sign. It's not going to be photos of people. There it is there. That's the for sale sign that I downloaded. Already done for me. Right? So there's like, look at all these real estate icons. Oh, actually, that's another thing you can search. Real estate icon. Oh. Hit search. And there's 457 different downloads. And look, like this one download alone has like 15 right in it that you can download and use. Some of them are pretty cool. Some of them are pretty crap. But here, okay, let me go back. Oh, here's a, a bunch of good ones. Look at all those good icons already done up that you can use. Right. So let me show you my folder. So that's the uh, for sale sign I downloaded. Here's another one I needed. I'm like, 
I want an Instagram post for people searching for condos. Open with photo. So I'm like, okay, I want a map in the background. That's no problem. I can get a map, but I want like a picture of somebody holding a smartphone. So then what I did is I went to Stock Unlimited and let's see, um, holding phone. And here's a whole bunch of like, here's some new ones. Like I probably maybe would have used this one because it's, I like it. It's blue. Um, so yeah, all of these are already done and designed. And I'd be like, oh, that one's pretty cool or whatever. So you can search anything you want. These are just some examples. I did that. And then here I had another one where I needed a Facebook banner. I wanted a Facebook banner for um, a real estate page. So I made this. And I searched the word brick wall and it came up with all these different brick walls. And then I was able to overlay the text that I wanted on that brick wall. Instead of me being limited and not having a brick wall within 30 seconds, I could have been like, oh, you know what? I want a brick wall for this banner. Brick wall. And in that case, I actually want it to be a photo. So I'm going to go back to photo, hit search. And here's a whole bunch of brick walls. So I don't know where the one is that I picked. I probably just scrolled down and found a good one. Whatever, your cha your uh, flavor, whatever you like. Maybe you like the grunge look and you could have picked that. Let me go back. Okay, and then uh, here's one that we use. So I'll get, um, this one we used over and over and over again. So let me do, open with photos. So I wanted an uh, image that I could use that says, get a full list of condos and townhomes for sale. And then I just changed it at the keyword. So it says, get a full list of investment property for sale. Get a full list of condos and townhomes for sale, detached homes for sale, luxury real estate for sale. So I just changed out the keyword and I wanted a picture of a computer and a list of paper, like a stack of paper. Um, so yeah, you can make the coolest images and you don't have to pay these people to go out and make custom stuff for you just think of like what is it what's the call to action okay what keywords relate to that and then you can start searching um so yeah that's just a couple examples here this ad actually <laughs> this one worked really good for house values so it says house values uh, my house values, and it's got a picture of a guy feeling squeezed in his own home. Um, of all the house value images that we use, this one, this one worked the best. It got the most leads for the, like, say I had a $300 budget and I did three different ads, one with this one, another one with a picture of um, paper, another one with a picture of a computer. This one always produced the most, most leads. So there you go. Sometimes you'll do your advertising and you'll find one image works better than the others. And the only way for you to tell is by actually trying different images. But are, like, are you going to be able to reenact this photo and take a photo? Maybe. Or you can just Google search, not Google search it. Sorry, that's the opposite of what I want you to do. I want you to go to websites like Stock Unlimited, Pixabay, um, Unsplash. What was this one? Pixels. All these websites, you could just search the keywords. So I type in brick wall. It's going to give me a whole different set. Ooh, the white one. I like the white one. It's nice and clean. So that would look good. And you could have like real big, big and bold, like red lettering or blue lettering. And it would, that would really pop um, just having that in the background. So this is the benefit of using the different resources that I'm giving you. Because if you limit yourself to just one, then you're stuck with just their library. So what I like to do is search all these different libraries and I get the best of the world. There are other sources out there that cost way more money, like 200 to 500 a month. I'm not even going to mention them because you aren't advertising agencies and you don't need that sort of thing. This list right here is going to get you rolling with all the different things that you need. So I'm going to record this, send you guys the list of all my links. I'm going to include these, um, links so that you can watch like a couple of my samples. Oh, 
actually, I got one more sample we can watch. So I want to show you how I added video with audio and stock photography. On the overview page. Okay, so let me hit play on this. So see how it has the clip of me inside of this phone? Well, I needed a picture of a phone, so I went to, um, what I go to? Shutterstock is the one where I, this one here, so where I pay per photo. I went to Shutterstock, and I searched the word iPhone, so if I'm like, ooh, I need an iPhone, or whatever phone you want, I'm going to hit search. And then it came up with 661 different pictures of iPhone. So I maybe I picked that one. Just go for the most modern one. So you'd probably want this one, for example. Anyways, download whatever one you want. And in my video, you'll see there's the, there's the iPhone. And then I put my video inside of the iPhone. And then I also wanted to frame my story. So I'm like, I need a picture frame. So I searched just like TV frame or monitor. And that's what's in the background. So let me hit play. The concept of group coaching real estate agents is drastically about to change. With startups and a fast-paced industry, we have ways to virtually meet like never before, creating a real community that's learning-based and collaborative. That's why I'm excited to be partnering with Patreon.com to be... So notice the music in the background. It's at like a 5 or 10% level. It's just filling in the background noise and adding like... Oh, actually, let me hit play because you're going to be creating a group coaching platform for realtors across the nation with a focus on marketing and technology for the real estate industry. It's a perfect time to be joining us, too. Because so right when I said it's a perfect time to be joining us, too, um, the beat picked up. So I, I timed all of that. I wrote out my script first on a blank Word document. And then in that Word document, um, beside each of the sentences, I put what visual should I use when I'm saying these words? And then I Google search, not Google, geez. I, uh, let me go back to here. I didn't design those. I searched um, what, election icons, and it gave me all these different icons. So I, I talk about that. I needed that. And then what, where else? I had a, a clip right here. Where is it? Oh, here I talk about like people in the race or something. I forget what I said, but I, I, whatever, this picture works for it. So I searched for a picture of people running. Um, so you can see how I stacked all like the picture of the TV frame. And then I put the picture of the phone. And then over top of the phone, I put the video clip of me literally reading the script. And then based on the script, I timed everything. So let me hit play again live Q&A session and send you a video response. This is amazing because real estate agents can now learn when they want and still get support from their coach on an ongoing basis. So I'm not going to make you listen to that whole thing. Actually, now that I'm re-listening to that, I should have lowered the background to um, the background music to be a lower volume because it is kind of competing with my words. So there you go. That is to inspire you on how you can use other people's content that they've already created and then stitch it all together. Now, a lot of you are going to love the idea, but then you're going to get hung up on the, how do I stitch it all together? I don't know how to put these pieces together. That's what our next session is going to be on, I think. Um, come Monday, I'm going to announce what our next date, time, and topic is, but I'm going to try and make it where I do the video editing from beginning to end, and I put all the pieces together um, for you. So. Cool. I'm going to end this webinar now. I appreciate you guys hanging out and being with me. I want to hang out for just a second. If somebody wants to chat and ask questions, I will address that. But for the rest of you, thanks for being with us, and you'll get the email Monday evening. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to hang out here, let people start to leave, and if you want to ask a question, go ahead and type it out below. I'll, I'll answer. Otherwise, we'll be done. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you guys like that. That was, I didn't know how I was going to make that a, a good session because
it wasn't like a presentation. It was more of me going all over the place. So I was nervous and happy that it worked. Can you do a session which DSL camera to buy? Um, no, because I'm actually going to be suggesting most agents don't get a DSL camera. Um, if anything, I would do a session on the DJI Pocket um, because it's going to be way more useful for most people. Yeah, the DSL camera, like... I have the D, um, the Sony A6300. I'm happy with it. They're expensive. I don't know, two grand, something. Um, okay, so before you hop into getting the pocket, since it's just you and I chatting, uh, there is one limitation with the pocket. Let me... Um, well, there's nothing for me to show you. So the DJI pocket... Actually, there is. D GI pocket um, mic adapter images. Okay, so this thing right here plugs into the DGI and then you can plug whatever microphone you want into it. They haven't released it yet. So that means you're forced to only use the audio with the built-in mic. And the built-in mic in any camera is crap because it just gets the whole room instead of what you're intending to get. So if you do get the DJI Pocket, awesome. I already have it and I'm already using it daily. Um, I'm just knowing that my audio is going to improve once this thing gets released. And it's probably going to come out within a month or so. It won't take that long. But um, until then, so when I do the recording of me doing the... Um, uh, let me see. How will I do this? You know what? I'm actually going to do a session called <laughs> What's in My Bag. I might, I might change the title, but anyways, I'm going to call it What's in My Bag. And I'm going to re go over all of the different camera gear that I use with um, the specific mics that I use, with the lighting that I use, and the setup on how it all like hooks up together. I want to do a session specifically on that. Just know... I'm going to, actually, because of you, I'll include my DSLR camera in that, but I'm going to stress to most agents that they don't need that because it's like two grand worth of overkill that they're not going to be able to really leverage. Yeah. Okay, here, somebody says, you showed me a camera at our session last week, could track and focus on the screen, and trainer, what was that? That's, that camera was the Mevo. Um, M-E-V-O, I think. Yeah. So get Mevo. Now, most anybody listening, I don't know who's here still. Let me check. All right, there's 18 of us here. Wow, there's still 18 people listening to me. Um, okay, so most real estate agents, you do not need this. It's the Mevo camera. Uh, what's really cool about it, however, is this is more for managers and people that go to a lot of conferences. So you set up the camera. It's one camera. It's really small. It's got one lens. However, it's actually like 12 cameras. So you can, while you're streaming live, it can track and you can do a group shot of everybody or you can just focus on the person who's talking at that moment. Um, if there's a, a, a screen or a presentation, you can have another camera um, queued up on that and where wherever the action is taking place it will edit live and transition from one scene to the next all all on the fly it's like so small that even looks bigger than it is in real life so this is a really small person holding that camera um, I use it mostly for conferences because normally at a conference there's the stage there's the podium and there's the screen um, so I like to set it up so it's locked on to the three different areas, and then I can just click. Um, I've done it live while I'm on stage and done the video editing while I'm presenting, which shows how easy it is. So that answers that. So that camera is really cool, but um, for any real estate agent, you're, you're way better off with the DJI Pocket.
Cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any other questions. So uh, I want to hang up now. Thanks for everybody hanging out. And I'm really glad you guys got value from that because I was kind of worried um, I'd be all over the place. And I kind of was. But um, all you need to do is pick up one or two things and uh, it's actually going to really impact your business because we live in a world of content creation now. You didn't know as a real estate agent that you're going to have to be a full-time marketer and you do. And uh, so if you don't have the ability to create your own content, you can use sources like this to just uh, download and use for free other people's or you can pay at a minimal amount. So that's what I do. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. Hey, if you want to close more real estate transactions, get more buyer leads, and get more seller leads, click this button right here. It'll take you to our real estate group coaching page. Also, if you like this video and want more, you can subscribe by pressing this, or you can check out some of my past videos here. Enjoy!